Boxing legend Muhammad Ali was not only known for his incredible skill inside the ring, but was also known for his activism outside the ring. My colleague Paul Sisko has more. Ali Bomaye, they chanted days before Muhammad Ali's heavyweight championship fight with George Foreman in Kinshasa in 1974. Ali was not just a three-time world champion, but he was Africa's champion. He was an icon and inspiration to Africans, first as a fighter and forever for his beliefs. The native son of Louisville, Kentucky, first hit the world stage, winning an Olympic gold medal in the 1960 Rome Olympics. Some refer to Muhammad Ali as the first true African-American. His connection with Africa has long been deep and meaningful. I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. When I beat Sunday Liston, I told you today I'm still the greatest of all time. The love and respect is mutual. Last night, I had a dream. When I got to Africa, I had one hell of a rumble. I had to beat Tarzan's behind first for claiming to be the king in the jungle. For this fight, I've wrestled with alligators. I've tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning and put thunder in jail. You know I'm bad. I have murdered a rock. I injured a stone and I hospitalized a brick. I'm so bad, I make medicine sick. I'm so fast, man, I can run through a hurricane and don't get wet. When George Fulmer meets me, he'll pay his debt. I can drown a drink of water and kill a dead tree. Wait till you see Muhammad Ali. The relationship between Ali and the continent was rooted in shared struggles and beliefs. The self-proclaimed Muslim championed Pan-Africanism. He met with Ghanaian nationalist leader Kwame Nkrumah and former Egyptian President Gabal Nassar and thousands of his African fans on a debut tour to Ghana, Nigeria, and Egypt. Ali was always treated as a hero wherever he went across the continent. The boxing icon visited Africa several times. First as Cassius Clay, and later as Muhammad Ali, the man often called the people's champion, never lacked confidence. You don't be a heart, it's gonna take a good man to whoop me. You can look at me, I'm loaded with confidence. I can't beat me. I had 180 amateur fights, 22 professional fights, and I'm pretty as a girl. And in his own words, was pretty too. I don't get hit. Never, never make me no underdog, and never talk about who's gonna stop me. Well, ain't nobody gonna stop me. Not a in 1974, Muhammad Ali was hosted by President Mobutu Sese Seko in Kinshasa Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of Congo. The famed Rumble in the Jungle title fight against George Foreman gave Africans a front row seat to one of the defining moments of Ali's career and life. There he regained the heavyweight championship, which had been stripped from him in the late 1960s for refusing induction into the U.S. Armed Forces. Clay's induction refusal cost him his title, and he faces a possible five-year prison sentence. 60,000 fans in Kinshasa and millions of Africans across the continent and the world saw him knock out George Foreman. Others considered the 1975 Thrilla in Manila Ali's and boxing's greatest heavyweight fight. In the stifling Manila heat, he defeated Joe Frazier when Frazier's trainer refused to allow him to answer the bell for the 15th and final round. A friend and inspiration to generations, the powerful and the powerless, world leaders and presidents, Muhammad Ali had no greater admirer than Nelson Mandela. For years, we've known the eventual outcome of Muhammad Ali's fight against Parkinson's disease. We've also known that this battle would be fought with grace and style to the very end. The greatest, Muhammad Ali. Paul Sisko, VOA News.